Hey, Shalom, it's Brother Yashima Zakar from the Israelite Times Report, IsraeliteTimes.com. Upon my watch, all praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth and sincerity. We are heading into the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, it's getting real. It's getting really real. And uh, a lot of you, pretty sure by now, have heard of uh, the situation in New York where they deployed um, damn near a thousand National Guard to the subway stations because crime is that bad. Crime riddled city. And uh, so now Esau has the excuse to make the move. Start bringing in troops, right? I talked about it last week. Well, <clears throat> also, uh, I think it was the week prior, I spoke about um, Mayor Bowser, Washington, D.C. Uh, she, and I believe it's a, is it a congresswoman or a councilwoman, one or the other, uh, this Pinto check. Is, they got something called the Bowser Pinto Plan. D.C. crime bill, and it's a way to uh, crack or, or lower crime in D.C. And basically what they're talking about is bringing down the hammer. Well, they had to vote on, on the D.C. crime bill. It's called the Secure D.C. Crime Bill. And um, they voted on it twice, and it got passed twice. So this is from Fox 5 D.C., Mayor Bowser signs secure D.C. crime bill into law, says Mayor uh, Mario Bowser, signed into law Monday the new secure D.C. Ominous, omnibus amendment act of 2024. It's a comprehensive piece of legislation designed to combat the crime crisis impacting lives all across the city. You see, all across the city. Oh boy. That mean what? What does that mean? That mean we gotta do something about you niggas. Translation. I'm giving you the translation. I'll read it again and then I'll translate it. And it says it's a comprehensive piece of legislation, written. That this is written into law. A comprehensive piece of legislation designed to combat the crime crisis impacting lives all across the city. That means, in translation, we got to do something about you niggas. Okay? All you little mop head dum-dums walking around like, you're, like a monkey with your, your girls, your, 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 your little sister's tight-ass pants on breaking into cars and shit, wearing, you know, little Gucci purses, talking about it's a man bag, you little niggas are about to get rolled on. All right? The Secure D.C. Bill, and back to the article, the, D the Secure D.C. Bill was a roughly 100-page piece of legislation passed by the D.C. Council last Tuesday. What's in the Secure D.C. Crime Bill? Hmm. It says it strengthens gun penalties. Okay, so you little nigglets that are running around with your little pew pews, right? You're going to get, uh, uh, <laughs> I should say, better sentences, but uh, tougher sentences. You're going you're gonna to get real sentences this time. You're not going to get your little dumb ass ain't going to go to jail and be out next week. Tell my man, I told y'all I'll be back because, you know, they was doing the little you know, the, the, the release thing. They, you know, they would lock somebody up for a violent crime or possession of a weapon. And, and for the past three years, they would just let them out. It wasn't really, you know. But it says here, it's, it strengthens gun penalties, cracks down on organized theft. Because, like I said, you got these smashing grabs. That's what it's talking about. These smashing grabs and these um, um, burglaries, these, these carjackings. They're organized, right? And you see all of all of these videos of people running in these stores, um, 
you know, a whole crew, a whole team of people doing it all at once. But it says it's going to crack down on organized theft and expands the definition. Excuse me. It expands the definition of carjacking. Okay, it's going to expand the definition of carjacking. So that means that uh, you're going to get real jail time, real prison time. Okay, for real. If if they carry through with this, it's already been passed. But if they carry through with this, that's your ass. Okay, you ain't gonna be. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna spend a few months on the yard. Then I'm coming back home. No, nigga. <laughs> No, nigga. Um, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, it says it also creates drug-free zones and allows for the collection of suspects' DNA if they're charged with a violent or sex crime. And there's more to it than that, by the way. Um, you got to go to the uh, Bowser Pinto plan. Uh, I believe it's .com or .org, one of those. Um, to really look up and see what's really in it. Because uh, Mayor Bowser is in, in Pinto, this councilwoman, congresswoman, whatever she is, I forget now. <clears throat> but um, they're talking about uh, having police roll up on people for having these masks on. Because, you know, they got these little shiesty masks that they like wearing around and shit. Yeah, they're talking about... How, and another thing they were talking about was, um, you know, if you if you in a group... Just chilling on the block, there yeah, they can roll up on your ass now. Okay, so I, I got to look and see if that's in this particular bill. But I do know that that's something that um that Bowser and Pinto was looking into. Okay. Um. It says there was. It says there was passionate and sometimes heated debate over several elements of the legislation. Some people say more needs to be done. On the intervention side, yeah, more needs to be done. Like, in other words, what they're telling, because see, Bowser's in a, in a jam. You know, she's got to run for mayor again. And these uh, Edomites, because there's a lot of well-to-do Edomites in D.C. D.C. is not the chocolate city no more. Them days is over. <laughs> the, the whole chocolate city thing, D.C., that's over. Okay, there's a lot of well-to-do people there now. And they don't want their city that they living in to be riddled with crime and thugs. And they're afraid to walk outside because you got a nigga with a shiesty mask on. You know, ready to pretend like he's in a rap video. You know, because his dumb ass just got high and decided he wanted to, you know, do what he just saw in some stupid ass rap video. They're trying to get rid of that shit. But it says there was there was there was passionate and sometimes heated debate over several elements of the leg legislation. <clears throat> Some people say more needs to be done on the intervention side. Others are concerned that the police are being given controversial new powers, and they are. Some of which were stripped away in the wake of George Floyd. And that's what I told I, the George Floyd murder, they say. But that's what I said. Um, uh, uh, even when this first started with this whole defund the police uh, letting prisoners go home early I said this is the setup to come back with even stricter laws this is how they play the game you niggas don't know how this game is played I swear you don't you do not know how this game is played you niggas are stupid they wanted you to go out there and commit violent acts, violent crime, you know. They wanted this shit, and they wanted it spread all over the news, all over, everybody all over the world. See, because see, what you got to understand is, look, look, let me explain something to you. I know D.C. is a small town, city, whatever you want to call it. It's technically, what do they call it, the District of Columbia uh, but it's a it's what you call a city state. It doesn't have it's not it, it does it's not a part of a state. You know, it's like uh the Vatican, right? So anyways, um but it still represents <laughs> it still represents America. 
And you think of America, what do you think of? Like, if you're a foreigner, you think of what? You think of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. And you think of New York. You think of the Statue of Liberty, and you think of the damn uh, Washington Monument, and the Lincoln Memorial, and the Capitol Building. Like, you think that's, that's how you think. If you're from, okay, so people all over the world are seeing D.C., New York, okay, filled, riddled with crime. All right? So now no one's going to say, oh, you're wrong for, for treating these young black men this way. For throwing them up against the, the, the wall and stomping their goddamn head in on the curb. Because for the past four years, since 2020, all they've been seeing is young black men breaking into shit, breaking into stores with shiesty mask on. On demon time, as they call it, dumbass. Right? That's all they've been seeing. Right? Nobody's going to cry for you. No one cares. No one wants to hear that shit now. Um, so anyways, um, you got that. I want to see, was there, um, I think there was some more on the, uh, uh, New York situation. Let's see, was there an update on that? Um, I saw something earlier. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, it says here, this from Zero Hedge. I forgot to get this last week. The coming of the police state in America. It says the National Guard and the state police are now patrolling the New York City subway system in an attempt to do something about the explosion of crime. As part of this, there are bag checks and new surveillance of all passengers. No legislation, no debate, just an edict from the mayor. The message has been sent. Only the police can do this job. Whether they do it or not is another matter. So then they go into um, what's going on. And of course, they call it a police state. Um, it says, uh, I want to I wanna get this part of it. It says, when you step back from the details, what we have is the dawning of a genuine police state in the United States. It's only... It only starts in New York City. Where is the guard going to be deployed next? See, that's the question that nobody's asking. If they're going to start there in New York, then where? What, what it, who else is going to start this? It says anywhere is possible. If the crime is, is bad enough, citizens will welcome it. Okay, that's what I've been trying to get across to people is that. But you little nigglets, you little dumb niggas don't realize. Yeah, I'm going to call you dumb niggas today. Uh, Might be nicer tomorrow. I don't know. But today you're a dumb nigga. What what y'all don't know and don't realize is this. You're not going to be able to do what you did in 2020, stupid. You're not going to be able to go out there. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No one's going to give a fuck about your no justice, no peace chance. Dumbass. And if you try to do what you did in 2020 and break into some shit, because that's what you were doing in 2020, doing the George Floyd uh, riots, you try to break into people's stores and shit because you mad because the police are now locking people up. Well, guess what? Now you're going to be another nigga locked up because they're not going to handle you the same way they did in 2020. See, that's what you don't understand. You lost your sympathy. Your sympathy card is gone. See, now I know that these niggas of the world, but if you got these so-called black conscious community cats, if they were smart and they really concerned about them, they would have put a stop to all of this smash and grab shit. They, they should have done something. Right? Because they, if they were smart, they would have said, hey, 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 what y'all doing right now? You're going to justify them really coming down on us in the in, in the near future. But no, they, Dr. Umar Johnson didn't do that shit. 
Brother Polite, he was too busy uh, raping his 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 wife's uh, daughter. And he locked up in jail for, for drugging and raping a, a 14-year-old girl. These are your leaders, man. These are the people that you follow. Some weird old pedophile-ass nigga. Brother Polite. This is what you follow. Weird-ass niggas, man. But no, but see, I'm wrong for talking shit about niggas. Niggas ain't shit. If you ain't uh, Israelite and you ain't claiming your true heritage, then fuck you. It's 2024. Fuck you. You you should be no better by now. There ain't no goddamn excuse. Excuse my language. I went there. I know. I know. Don't use the F word. Oh, no, no, no. Anyway, um, y'all think my cursing is bad. Y'all should see what, what these devil's about to do to you niggas when they get their hands on you then you're gonna see what a real curse word really look like because you're gonna you're gonna know what it's like to be really cursed all right um there was more to the article but i want to go ahead for the sake of time i want to get into something else um so i'm gonna go ahead and get these scriptures right quick and i you know hey we got to shake the dust off of this one this is daniel 8 22 says now that being broken, whereas fools stood up for it, for kingdom shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. <clears throat> now we're in the um, fourth beast, the Roman Empire, the revised Roman Empire, America, USA. All right. Um, it says, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark senses shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And right now, um, we're seeing this in real time. Through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Um, and when you really look at it, um, what Esau has been able to do through his policies, he's been able to divide uh, our people up. You look, you look at it right now, you got half the niggas are Democrats, half the niggas are Republicans, right? Half the niggas... Uh, and, and now I'm talking, when I say niggas, I'm talking about those are supposed to be like politically uh, active, you know, they're supposed to be in a, the, the, they aren't there, you know, they think they're, poli these niggas, they really do, they really do think they know something. I'm just finding that out. Because God forbid I have to hear it all the time now. Now that I'm on a day shift, I just I'm gonna shake my damn head. Um, I was shocked to find out that people still supported Biden because, um. You know, when you watch alternative news, everybody hates Biden. You know, but um, no, there's still people. There's there's people. I heard people brag about Biden, talking about him doing a good job at the State of the Union. I wanted to, sh excuse me, I almost said something. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, I, I just I'm it was a figure of speech, but still can't say it that way. But you know, I just what the what what in the actual mm, did I just hear? You niggas are really that stupid. And every time I think our people just can't get any worse, they just think they just sink lower, man. I just saw a video, side side note, of these young Eves, these black girls. I don't know. They might have been maybe 18, 19. I don't know. They was at Miami Beach or whatever, the, the spring break, or whatever it was. And they were fighting. And I'm just like, and it was like a brawl. Yeah, I might have seen the video. Somebody showed it to me. And I'm just like, but that's all we do. You know? The, I, and and, and uh, it's just, our people are like, man, our people are gone, gone. But it says, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand 
and he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. And this is what he's promising, peace and safety. Peace and safety. But what's going to happen when, <laughs> right? When they shall say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction, right? And that's our people. That's the position that they're in right now, right? And I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you brothers that may be in the truth, have faith, or you just at least have faith in the truth. Let's just say it like that. You have faith in it. Let's just say you believe in Yahweh and Yahweh Shah and, and you have faith. I know at some point, especially when you first learned about the truth, I know at some point you try to talk to your family. Big mistake. We all been there. <laughs> we all been there. Try to talk to your family, your friends, your loved ones. They have no clue what the hell you talking about. And neither do they care. Them the niggas that go to church on Easter Sunday. But if you get into the scriptures of, of, of what's really going on in the Bible, they're not trying to hear that shit. And then you get mad, you know, especially if you knew in the truth, you get mad, you get offended. But for what? The Lord got to wake them up. If the Lord don't wake them up, they're not going to wake up. <laughs> they're going to be voting for Biden 2024. I'm riding with Biden. I'll never forget that shit. I couldn't believe it. And Biden said, look, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. <laughs> Didn't he say something like uh, poor kids are just as smart as white kids or something like that? <laughs> My bad, Biden don't be playing. He be saying some racist shit right out in the open. And niggas just. Goop, 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 goop. Well. He better than Trump. Niggas is stupid, man. We got to vote for the lesser of two evils. Niggas is stupid. We got to vote for the lesser of two evils. It's like saying, look, master, I don't like the way other master hit me with his whip. But the way you hit me with your whip is much better. You getting your ass whipped no matter what whip you get hit with, stupid. Dumb nigga. And a nigga's so stupid, he'll really, like, you know. Well, master hit me with the whip, you know, it, it feels different from the way the other master hit me with the whip. And nigga be right next to him, tell him, mm-hmm, so sure we're different. Mm-hmm, so sure we're different. So sure we is. That's why Esau said we was the perfect slaves. Here it is. You got a whip to your back. You got whips and shit. And you talking about that one. You know, well, I, I'll take that one from Massa. But the other Massa, I ain't taking from him. Niggas, the niggas are, it, it says, uh, has Israel become a homeborn slave? Roughly paraphrasing. That's, that's, Jake, man. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. And they destroy our people with the promise of peace. And they're going to try to do it again. Time of Jacob trouble. They're going to try to do it again. Because they're promising peace. Oh no, the crime is out of control. Oh my goodness. We got to do something. And like that one article said uh, from Zero Hedge, talking about the New York subways, you got people asking for martial law. They're asking for troops. They're asking for the police state. <laughs> that's, that's where we are. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Okay. Let me see. Um, I'll get this one right quick. This is Luke 12. I love this. Oh, my goodness. I love this. Luke 12, 49. It says, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I <laughs> if it be already kindled? Because when the Lord come back, this is already going to be turmoil. It's going to be a lot of, it's going to be the, the rollout of the mark of the beast. It's going to be a lot going on. Right quick. Let's go to um, Jeremiah. 30, I'm, I'm shaking, let's, 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 uh, 
blow the dust off of these. Jeremiah 30. I know, I know. Jeremiah 30. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. <laughs> right? We're not headed into a time of peace, man. Ask ye now and see whether a man doeth travail with child. Because these men are going to be acting like women. Like pregnant women. In that day with the shit that they're going to see. Okay? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail. And all faces are turned into paleness because niggas you have black niggas <laughs> turn it turn it pale from the shit that they're going to see out here i had a dream i told y'all about that about the monster that was eating everybody i was on my way to work yo in the dream that these cops were just shooting people as they were walking by like people walking by they was like in a in a trance or something like a zombie-like state like they were just following each other and the cops were just standing by the car and the person walked by, boom, shoot him. Another person walked by, boom, just shoot him. And instead of people going, oh, shit, damn, let me get the hell out of here. No, they were, they were just kept walking. I was the only person that was conscious in that dream. Me and, and, and uh, the police, because the police were aware of what, what they were doing. And it was this one black Jake, this older black Jake that, that came to me in a dream later on in that dream. And told me to get the hell up out of here. He told me I got to make a decision. But everybody else was just walking, you know, do, 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 boom, do, 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 boom. Like I just imagine. And then they were, they were going up the damn escalator or whatever it was. And it was a monster, big ass monster standing there. And was just swallowing them up. And instead of them saying, oh shit, let me not go up there. No, they were getting ate up. That was a heavy dream, man. And I really took that dream lightly. You know, well, I took, I knew it was a heavy dream. But at the same time, you know, I look back on it now. That was deep, man. Because that's where we are now. These people are in a zombie-like state. They don't even understand what time they're in. Okay? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And that's what I wanted to get to. Again, for that day is great, so that none is like it. We're gonna, it's going to be worse than anything that we've ever seen. Okay? It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that salvation. Uh, went on too long already. But we're looking for that salvation, man. Because when they use this, these, uh, this footage of niggas breaking into stores, niggas breaking into cars, all the prisoners that they let loose in 2020 during the pandemic that caused all this havoc, they're going to come down with great wrath. And I know I'm saying this, uh, it's repetitive, but there are newer people that are listening that don't quite understand why this is so serious. They don't understand. They don't get it. They think I'm just a nigga ranting. Nigga, why you never say nothing positive? Nigga, ain't nothing positive to say. You want something positive? Go talk to IUIC. There ain't nothing positive coming, nigga. The only thing positive is deliverance. And you better do A. And, and we're praying and hoping like hell for that. When I tell you I'm nervous, in my spirit, I'm nervous. Like, I'm, I, man, I be thinking about it. Because, you know, it's, it's good to get on here and talk shit, you know, woo, woo, woo. And I be, man, and like, even today, man, I kind of like, you know, I was at work and I said, Lord, please let me be a man of the Lord. <laughs> I'm dead at it. Like, please let me be a man of the Lord. Like, please, man. Please, Lord. Cause I, I mean, I was just looking around, man. I was like, oh, man, this shit, when it go down. Because there's a lot of gully, gritty, grimy-ass, shysty-ass niggas walking around. And I just, I look at them and I go, oh, I hope I don't get caught up in whatever's coming to them. I hope I don't get caught up in that. Like, please let me be a man of the Lord. If you have mercy on me, please. 
please, you know, I know I was a, a trifling ass nigga back in the day, but please, Lord, have mercy on me. You know, we hope, man. We hope we make it in this thing, man. And it's what it said, the righteous shall scarcely make it. The, the, the righteous, excuse me, lock it. The righteous shall scarcely be saved, right? Scarcely, man. Meaning we just going to barely make it in. You know, if, if we're men of the Lord, even the men of the Lord, man, we're going to be afraid in that day. Nothing wrong with being afraid, you know, because, the, the, well, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, you know. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. You know, you you got to be afraid. First of all, fear the Lord. What? That's the beginning of your, of wisdom. It's the beginning of knowledge. It's, that's how you get understanding, through that fear. Okay? <laughs> Jake doesn't fear. <laughs> Jake doesn't fear the Lord. J Jake thinks the Lord is his friend. I love the Lord. The Lord is with me all the time. He's my friend. Sorry, right, you're going to learn to fear the Lord. All right, Shalom. It's Brother Yashima Zakar from the Israelite Times Report. IsraeliteTimes.com. Upon my watch, all praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth and sincerity. I have this clip uh, I want to play of this boxer, uh, Ryan Garcia, who all of a sudden is supposedly the guy that's exposing the New World Order. He's the latest celebrity that's jumping on board to expose the New World Order and the wicked elites and all of that. And, you know, he's got people in a frenzy and, uh, you know, people are gullible. They see these actors and athletes speaking some form of truth and the first thing people do is they you know start praising them but um you know I'm I'm more skeptical if you you know if you want to call it that I just you know I don't buy the bullshit um but anyway he said what he said um he's going to go into it about the Epstein Island and yeah, just take a listen. Listen to what he's saying. Um, and then I'll come back with my thoughts on it. Looking that was done in 2017. And that's why all these motherfucking people coming out the woodworks and shit. <laughs> and a lot of CEOs and shit stepping Look down yeah, and all I this got shit. The FD, I got the Epstein names. If you want exactly. me to start dropping them. Oprah. <laughs> what? Who cares? I do. What do you mean? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And it, this is pub, this Tom is Hanks. all like like Tom this Tom stuff. This, Tom Hanks. Who else, is, stuff, who, who's else is on that list? We already know who's on that list. That's why they're scrambling. They're scared, bro. They're scram they're scamming. They're like, ooh, oh no, fuck. So they're trying to run. They're trying to get into bunkers. They're trying to. They're all hiding. Why do you think they're hiding? Why do you think Mark's building that that um? Mm -hmm. Got him. Got him. Got him. He's he building yeah. that bunker. Why do you think he's building that bunker? He knows what's about to go down. Think this is? You think this is gonna stop? Nah, brother. No, no, no. This is real. This is all real. There's no. There, he he ain't gonna build a bunker for no reason. Think about that. As you heard in the clip, uh, Garcia goes on about you know Oprah and Tom Hanks and. I think he mentioned uh, Zuckerberg. And that's all fine and dandy. And he was talking about the bunkers and everything. And again, that's fine and dandy. Um, and yeah, part of that is true. They are going to try to uh, run into their bunkers or whatever to hide. But who the hell is really going to try to uh, take them out? You, you can't expect the elites to try to... Um, bring justice, you know, for children. That's not going to happen um, because they're all caught up in it themselves. And that, like I say all the time, this is mainly just a big distraction. This is for people to get caught up in. You know, they give you some form of truth. 
But uh, but at the same time, uh, we know that this devil came to do nothing but to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what's in him. And so are the people that follow him. All right? But we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. And we know that these celebrities are paid off shields. And um, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll send somebody like a Danny Garcia. Excuse me. I keep calling him Danny. Ryan Garcia. They'll send somebody like him out there to say these type of things to get the people all worked up. Okay. And thinking that they have some, uh, some form of, uh, uh, what, you, what, what what's the word I'm looking for? Opposition, right? To fight against the, the wicked elites. Look, the only thing that's going to take down this devil is Yahweh by Hashem Shah. Everything else is bullshit. Alex Jones is bullshit. Donald Trump is bullshit. Okay? All of your favorite uh, YouTubers that are supposed to be truthers, they're all bullshit. Nothing's going to take this devil down except Yahweh by Hashem Shah. Everything else is bullshit. Okay? So, you know, I just want to make that clear. You know, just because he's speaking some truth, it doesn't make him all of a sudden a man of the Lord. Um, he's still in that world, that entertainment world. He's still living that life. Okay? And and these celebrities, man, that especially these ones that are now supposedly speaking out against the elites, most of them have occult ties, them damn selves. Most of them are, are very involved in the occult world. And most of them are Satanists. And they will fool you into thinking, because you have to understand, that's what Satan does. He tricks you. Okay, they will fool you into thinking that there's some kind of uh, opposition or th they're on the opposing side of Satan when they are actually Satanists themselves. You know, I say the same thing about Cat Williams. Cat Williams comes on and starts talking all this stuff about the Illuminati and this, that, and the third. And that's fine. You know, and I'm not knocking him. You know, maybe he, the brother's just lost. I don't know. But he went from the Illuminati to all of a sudden talking about the fucking uh, Anunnaki and all this other shit. Again, they set these people up on purpose and they play their roles. Donald Trump is a great example of that. You know, they got people thinking he's really at war with Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton has been friends since, shit, probably going back to the, at least the early 90s. You know, but they play games with people. They play on the hearts of people. Second Corinthians 2 and 11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's a simple scripture, and everybody knows it, but... You know, be a man of the Lord, be circumspect, be be uh, judgmental towards these people that you see uh, uh, all of a sudden propping up and, and trying to play the role of hero, especially in the, especially in these last days, man. You know. Especially in these last days, these these people, they're not really look, they're not really about the, the Lord's work, man. They're, they're not really about the Lord's kingdom being established. What they're about is white supremacy. They're, they're about white Christian uh, supremacy. And, and I say it like that because even when they expose the wicked elites, what they'll do is they'll do it from a Christian, uh, a conservative, a white Christian perspective. You know, it's still preaching white Jesus. When, they, when, when, when these people start talking about, oh, these elites, they're they're against the Bible. Well, what are they talking about? They're talking about establishing the white Christian Bible. Okay, defending the, 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 the white Christian Bible. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about, uh, you know, bringing the truth about Yahweh by Shimei Abishai and who the real children of Israel are. You'll never hear that. And if you do, they'll say it in a, in a weird way, like this guy Kanye, when he said, it, you know, uh, 12, 12 tribes of Jews or Judah, right? But he doesn't say the Israelites. You know, he says it all effed up and backwards. 
And that's, again, that's a stumbling block. That's why I don't pay these guys any attention. I only speak on it so that, you know, I, I know there's a lot of new people and I don't want to be selfish and just say, the hell with that. You know, I'm not going to talk about it. I get into it so that people can can get an understanding, you know, the new brothers that, that are coming in this thing that, that don't, you know, that don't quite understand the way this game is played yet. They'll get distracted by something like that. You know, Kyrie will throw them off. Kanye will throw them off. You know? Um, these these people are, are, are really full of it, man. They'll really have you thinking that there's some kind of uh, hero or there's some messenger from God. Oh, God set this man up to tell the truth. No, he didn't. No, he did not. Okay? The Lord is, is look, let me see. Um, let me explain. Let me get 2 Corinthians 11 and 6. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. And see, that's part of the, the problem is that uh, a lot of times people love to, to, to uh, go attend these events of these eloquent speakers. Or they love to listen to these podcasters that, that have this eloquent speech. You know, they speak in a certain way. They have a certain tone. They have a, you know, a certain look, a certain get up. And people are drawn to that. Right. But that's not what it's about, man. It's about the truth. Do you want the truth or do you want bullshit? Because you can find bullshit anywhere. But if you want the truth, you must come to the men of the Lord. And that's the men of the Lord that are teaching it in, in truth and in sincerity. They're being true and sincere about what they're saying. All right. And that's what you should be looking for. Second Corinthians 11 and 6. But though I be rude in speech. Yet not in knowledge. But we have but we have been. Thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. All right? You, you need to know the difference between somebody that's sincere and somebody that's just there to, to, to get you uh, hooked, line and sinker into their madness, their bullshit. All right? Because it's easy to get swept away. It's easy to get carried away. Until it's foolishness. And these celebrities, they know that once their career is over, they need a new platform. They need to to bring in viewers in some other way, shape, or form. And, and a lot of times now, the new trend is um, you'll get some ex-celebrity, some B-rated, or it could be A-rated celebrity. All of a sudden, they're telling the truth. They want to talk about Jeffrey Epstein and the, and the Epstein flight log. All right, that's cool, but what are you doing? What are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? Who told you to do it? All right, who told you to do it? That's what you should be paying attention to is that <clears throat> these, these people, they're not bringing the full truth. They're giving you half truths. That's not it, man. We should know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. All right? So now, you know, I want to, you know, what he was talking about, I want to say this. Yeah, these people are buying these bunkers and trying to get away. Um, yeah, that part is true. Um, they, are, they are building bunkers, but they're really trying to avoid uh, World War Three you know, the nuclear missiles. That's what they're really afraid of. Okay? That's what that's what they're really trying to avoid. And and him saying, oh, they're building these bunkers, but they're not going to get away. But when he says that, who is he talking about? What, they're going to get away from him? He's not going to go into their bunker and dig them out. You know? The brothers, the, the men of the Lord, we've been bringing this out for years that these elites are going to um, try to uh, uh, try to go into their bunkers and hide. 
Amos 9 and 2 says, Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. The, the Lord is going to bring them down. The Lord is going to dig their asses up, and the Lord is going to take their asses down. Period. Ryan Garcia ain't going to do shit. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. See, the Lord has this on lock. <laughs> the Lord sends the command that there be uh, spirits made for vengeance. I believe that's how it goes. Excuse me. Right. The Lord will, will, will get them. If you're a carnal person, you'll, you'll be looking for somebody like Trump to play, be the hero and go take down all these, these wicked elites, you know, these pedo people. I don't want to say the word, right? They're taking these children up and, and snatching them and doing all types of wicked shit to them. But the Lord is going to do it. Right now, the earth has been, it's been given into the hands of the wicked. The, the earth is being ruled by the wicked. Danny Garcia, I just keep saying that. Ryan Garcia ain't going to do shit. Okay, if I say Danny Garcia again, just excuse me. There's no your brother, it's just, you know, that's, that. I keep, I keep doing that. But anyways, right? I want to get that again. And though they hide themselves in the top of Caramel, uh, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before the enemies, thence will I command the sword and it shall slay them. And I will set my eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And, and you know, the Lord does that to Jake, and he does that to these heathens as well. You know, it's twofold. Uh, the Lord, you know, is the real king of terrors. These people won't escape, but it, it won't be because some you know, idiot like Alex Jones or somebody went and got him or exposed him. It's going to be the Lord's doing, man. All praises are due to how about Shimmy how was shy. And, you know, these goofballs, they let these celebrities, you know, sway them. Oh, you know, this guy's exposing. What is it exposing? He ain't exposing shit. The true exposure is who, who the children of Israel are. All 12 tribes. Then we're talking. Kanye is saying that we're, we're, the Judah, we're Judah. Okay, cool. But who? The, what's the 12 tribes of Judah? Oh, excuse me, the 12 tribes of Israel. He said the 12 tribes of Judah. So that's why I slipped and said it that way. You know. He talking about the 12 tribes of Judah. Now, he may have meant to say the 12 tribes of Israel, but he didn't. Kanye didn't come back and explain himself and no he just put out a bunch of confusion in, in, a, in a soft attempt to try to make the men of the Lord look crazy because that's a big part of this game that they're playing in these last days is to try to make the men of the Lord look crazy alright that's a big part of their, their game a big part of their tactics you know, and, and they're going to have men that are going to go out there, commit violent acts, and they're going to call themselves Israelites or Hebrew Israelites or black Hebrew Israelites. And all the men of the Lord are going to be labeled as terrorists. That time is coming. That's the, that time is coming because the people already look at us like we're crazy anyway. They already don't like us. They already don't like our message. All they need is 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 whatever group leader or understudy to go out there and do something crazy and do it in the name of the Lord 
And there you go. They're going to censor us, ban us, try to take down our platforms, and lock some of us up. All right? Just understand this devil that we're dealing with. I do this every week. I, I end up going on a rant and end up not covering all of the um, articles that I got here. But I did want to go back over this. This is matter of fact, this one's new, but it's touching on what I was getting on um, last week about Trump and NATO. Uh, this came from Newsweek. It says NATO brushes off Donald Trump's threats. Oh, so NATO is bucking up against Trump. Now, so Trump didn't talk this shit. Now, NATO's talking shit back. It says, Newsweek says NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, I think that's how you say his name, brushed off Donald Trump's attacks against the efforts of the North Atlantic Treaty, uh, excuse me, Treaty Organization, NATO, in an interview on Monday, CNN News Central, when asked if he is concerned about the political direction of the U.S., um, where it's headed uh, and how it relates to NATO. Stoltenberg said the recent threats from Trump have not been directed at NATO. See, they're trying to downplay it. They're trying to downplay it. But no, Trump was dead ass serious. I think I played the clip too. Dead, Trump was dead ass serious. It wasn't last week. I think it was the week before when I when I played the clip of Trump saying that if NATO didn't pay you know, these NATO allied uh, countries don't pay, then he's not going to give them their, you know, support from the U.S. military. Um, but it says, uh, it says, uh, but instead they're directed, meaning Trump's threats are directed at allies who he perceives are not spending enough on defense. Uh, this is a quote from Stoltenberg. It says the criticism has not mainly been against NATO, but criticism coming from Former President Trump has been against NATO allies not spending enough on NATO. And there are things that are really uh, changed, that have really changed, excuse me. That's what Stoltenberg said. It says in a quote again from Stoltenberg, it says more NATO allies are spending at least 2% of GDP on defense. And now Sweden joined today and they are spending more than 2%, Stoltenberg said. Uh, NATO allies are really making a difference now by significantly spending more on defense. Um, and then they go into the situation with, and I'll read it again because um, they, all they did was read what has already been said by Trump. Trump sparked backlash after saying he would encourage Russian President Vladimir Putin to do whatever the hell he wants to NATO members that insufficiently contribute financially to the military alliance because Trump is saying F that it's America first America's not going to help you if you're not going to pay you know um, let me see I'm going to skip all that because I already got what Trump said um, let me see uh, there's there's something else here Anyway, he goes on, this guy Stoltenberg says that he believes the U.S. will continue to be strong with NATO. Um, oh, this, here we go. Uh, President Joe Biden has since slammed Trump's comments on NATO as he previously called it dumb and shameful while speaking at the White House in February. And this is a quote from uh, Joe Biden, whoever's playing Joe Biden, because I don't know if that's really Joe Biden, but I don't believe that's him, okay? But anyway, it says, the here in the quote, the worst thing is he's meant it. Excuse me. The worst thing is he means it. No other president in our history has ever bowed down to Russian to a Russian dictator. Let me say this as clearly as I can. I never will. For God's sake, it's dumb. It's shameful. It's dangerous. It's un-American. That's what President Potato Head Biden said. Um, or whoever is wearing a skin mask this week and pretending to be Joe Biden, because if, if you're in 2024 and you can't tell that that's not Joe Biden, you need to get your eyes checked. OK. And I feel very confident saying that. Now, if you want to say that that's uh, someone 
or you want, excuse me, if you want to say that's the real Joe Biden, but you believe he may have had uh, plastic surgery of some time of of some sort. Okay, I I I maybe I, I may give you that, even though I don't believe that that's the case. But whatever, you can't be this stupid. Twenty twenty four, you know, you cannot be that dumb. Um. And this is what um, this is what Trump said in a response. He said uh, back to Biden. He said Trump shot back at Biden's State of the Union comments on Truth Show, on Truth Social, writing, "Putin only invaded Ukraine because he has no respect for Biden." Would have never happened under Trump administration. Yeah, that's true. And for four years, it didn't happen, which is also true. Because Putin didn't do shit when when Trump's ass was in there. Um, but I do want to say this. Um, this is a beautiful thing. There's a lot of infighting going on with Esau. And I brought this out a couple of weeks ago, I think. All of the infighting that's going on with Esau, with Russia. You want to see Magog and Magog threatening the West because it's a beautiful thing. This would be exactly what we want to see. Okay. I get excited. You want to talk about what do I get excited about? I This is what makes me excited because I know the beast shall hate the whore. Right? Um, let me get it. Damn, I slipped up and said it. Let me get it right quick. Um, I wasn't even going to get it. Let me see. Um, where is it at? Revelation 17. Okay. Okay, let's go with uh, Revelation 17. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Okay, the ten horns. Uh, NATO, EU. All of that, at, at some point, there's going to be a breaking up. And it's already being broken up, really, to be honest with you. It's already being broken up. This this little alliance that they got going on is already flaky. And that really started when Trump got in the White House. It really started back then. Um, but it's, it's even more so now because of Russia and Ukraine and, and uh, you know, uh, the European uh countries they don't really want to go they really don't want to deal with this situation and it's beautiful because um the west uh you can say is mainly america won't stop and that really goes back to may you may not remember it um you may you may not remember it but this guy uh john mccain when he was still alive uh who's the other one was the other dipshit potato head um lindsey graham John McCain, y'all can go look this up for yourself. John McCain and Lindsey Graham going back, I want to say, 07-ish. I believe it was 2007. They went to Ukraine and told them, they promised them that we will supply you with weapons. We will back you uh, in a war with Russia. This was going way back. Okay, so the, the, the look these these nations they know what's going on. They they these other countries they know what's going on. They understand what's going on. All right, and they don't want to get their 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 men bloodied up because of America's bullshit. Now, I have that on good authority. They really don't want to be involved in it, and I, and I say that because when I was in Kuwait back in um shit was it O two. Long time ago, um, I remember the British because we did joint task force and the British uh, uh, airmen because we were U.S. airmen. We were doing a joint task force with the British airmen or Air Force, Royal, the Royal Air Force, I believe they call it. Um, and they were some savage. <laughs> they, you want to talk about potty mouth. But anyway, uh, they <laughs> they were hilarious. But um. They uh they would tell you straight up that this war is bullshit, and they were saying it before the Americans started saying it. You know, 
you know, this whole thing with because the U.S. was um, uh, uh, dealing with uh, at the time Afghanistan. It was all, you know, Osama, and I don't want to say too much, but Osama and this, that, and the third, and Al Qaeda, and all that. And um, the British, they were they were already like, yeah, it's bullshit. You know, we were headed from the Canadian troops as well. So this time around, they really don't want nothing to do with this shit. They really, really don't. They really, really don't at all. Okay? But these shall hate the whore. Okay? The horns, the, the, the ten horns, let me get it back again. It says, these shall make war with the lamb. Um, it says, these shall make war with the lamb. And the lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Okay? And we have to be faithful all the way to the end. All right? We have to be faithful all the way to the end because this is going to get rocky. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to look at certain times like, like you're not going to make it out. Like we have to believe that those chariots are going to come and deliver us, especially uh, once World War Three kicks off. And really before that, I'd say when that MOTB kick off, that's when you're really going to have to have that true faith. That's your real test, your real trial. But all of it's going to come down, man. It's, it's happening right now. Obadiah 1, it says all in, in this 7, Obadiah 1 and 7, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee that they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. And like I said before, um, these other countries, even these so-called allies, they really don't like America like that. I know because I worked with them. I remember, um, I'll talk about it now. I remember um, it was the Israelis came to our base. Um, I believe this was 05. And, you know, the U.S. was taking pictures and shit. You're not supposed to do that in, inside the, the, the cockpit. Inside of a, you're not supposed to do that. That is no, that's a no-no. It might not sound like a big deal, but if you understand, uh, especially back then, uh, that's a no-no. We, we're not even allowed to look inside. The, when we worked, we were on the airline. We were, excuse me, we were on the, the, uh, Flight line, that's what they call it, the flight line, right? You're not supposed to be taking pictures of the cockpit. That is that is a no-no. You can get shot for that. I, I want you to understand how big of a no-no that is. But when the Israelis, who were supposed to have been allies, came and they, um, you know, had their planes on our flight line, the U.S. was secretly uh, taking pictures and shit. I would say something else. I want there's something I really want to say, but I can't. You know, I'm gonna leave it. You know, this is true. I the, yeah, look, yeah, how about Shimmy? I was shot my witness. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. But these nations don't even like each other like that, especially the US. They all hate the US. Okay? It's only the the stupid Americans that don't understand that these other nations hate America. They're the only people that don't know this. See, I've been through this shit. That's why when I came to this truth and I heard all the beasts, the, uh, you know, hate the horde, you know, the ten horns. You know, I, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I knew that. I knew that. I, yeah, I already knew these nations didn't like America anyway. So it wasn't that big of a deal to me. All right. I I do want to get this Lamentations uh four and twenty two it says the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. And you know how the Lord gets down. You know, you see what he did to his own people. When we when we messed up and, and we're the apple of his eye. You know, Israel is the apple of his eye. Okay. And that was considered merciful. So you can imagine, you know, him him allowing us to go into hundreds of years of, of slavery, hardcore slavery. <laughs> right? And 
That was considered merciful. Imagine what he's going to do to these Edomites, man. Just, just use that. Use your imagination. They, they, they plot against us every day. Every day they're looking to bring us down. You think the Lord don't know that? You, you think the Most High don't know? Of course he do. And they're going to pay for that shit. They're going to pay. No, they're not going to make America great again. Okay? That's not happening. <laughs> These nations are going to going to wipe America off the off the map as they say. All right? It's going to get nasty. All right? This is this is this is what's coming. This is what um we need to be preparing for in our mind and and just knowing and understanding that these these times that we're living in right now, you don't really have anything right now. Anything you think you have, it can be taken away from you in a moment. We don't know how close we are. It says live as pilgrims in the earth, right? Because we don't really know. You might have to pack up and leave tomorrow. You don't know. I be thinking like that too. They're running these little test runs, these dry runs with the cyber. That look, you got to get in your head that shit could hit the fan at any moment. Because truth be told, it can't. 